so much gathered here quartet we are all waking up this morning hey <laughs> welcome 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 everyone to the first universalist church of rochester where we are called to nurture the spirit and to serve the community i'm reverend lane may reed and i am leading worship with you all this morning uh, leading worship with me today is our gathered here quartet that you just heard from dr brock chesvold our fabulous music director Newly doctored, congratulations. Uh, Emma is here with us. I'm a Barry for our online ministry team, as well as Chris DeGoya and Karen Labraco serving online. It is good, it is good, it is good to be together with you all this morning. If you are here for the first time this morning, whether here or online, we especially welcome you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making it to this worshiping community on this hot morning in here and a bit rainy outside. We have a visitor's form that can be found in the chat for our folks online and that can be found in your pews for folks here in person. Please fill out this form so we can offer you a welcome beyond this worshiping space. Before we take a moment to turn to our neighbors, either here in the sanctuary or online, let us take a moment to connect the two communities, to turn towards our camera over here in the corner and wave to Emma and wave to our online worshiping community from the sanctuary. It is good to be here. It is good to connect with you all. If you're online, we invite you to pop into the chat to offer a greeting. If you're here at First Universals, please take a moment to turn to your neighbor and offer a greeting this morning. Well, good morning. Oh, nice to see you too. Shocking that you are here. <laughs> 
I can't believe we're here together. It is. It's sure as shit. It's a beautiful day. All right. It's gorgeous with this piece. Yep, I know. It's beautiful. All right, everyone. We're going to sing this morning, and we are going to sing hymn number 395, Sing and Rejoice. I'm going to tell you right now, the words for this are very simple. It is sing and rejoice, sing and rejoice. Let all things living now sing and rejoice. And so please rise in body or in spirit. We are going to sing it twice through in unison. And then even though we're a bit of a small group here in the sanctuary, we're going to sing it in the round anyway. And so uh, we'll sing it twice through in unison. And then we'll start with this section over here and go to this section over here and sing it two times through in the round. So let's join in singing this simple chant together. Brock, will you play it once through for us just in case we don't know? Good morning. morning. I'm Elizabeth Osta, your worship associate for this morning. This past week, I have spent time at a family cottage with two five-year-old twins, Bobby and Henry, who call me Oma, a German-Dutch appellation for grandmother. They are tall and very active and continue to remind me to stop and pay attention to everything. Their senses are tuned in, the breeze off the lake, the speedboat that roars by, the bug crawling across the table, the delicious cinnamon toast, the butterfly that visits the flower arrangement on the porch table, the sound of the waterfalls when we visit Letchworth Park. Their tireless attention to the world thrills me and exhausts me. As I watch them scamper onto the playground, climbing fearlessly onto the twisted bars, swinging bridges, and jiggling stepping stones, I marvel at their agility. And I breathe deeply into these blessed children who are such a salve for my aching soul. Not having born children of my own, I thrill to their questions, their listening, their holy curiosity, and their wonder. Their exhausted parents nurture them through the myriad of life's dangers and keep them continually safe during these days of COVID, their joy and trust intact. At one point, Peter Pan becomes a focal point as the music fills fills us all. Tender Shepherd and Never Never Land top the list with the defiant, I won't grow up, tempting but confusing because kindergarten looms big on the horizon, excitement threaded with fear. And thus, life's circles wind in and out, tears of gratitude never far. Come, let us worship. Would Dave Van Arsdale come light up our chalice? And as we light our chalice here at First Universalist Church, and you light your own in your home, 
Will you join me in saying the chalice words in unison? May we be a people of welcome, here to grow in heart and mind and spirit. And may we reach out to serve our community. Please rise in body or spirit and join me in the affirmation of faith followed by our doxology. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the source and meaning of life. Thus do we covenant with each other and with all. treasure these days as we witness our flexible staff and their creativity that accompanies our in-person hybrid mass services. We can support this complex configuration of technology and the savvy services we have been fortunate enough to be a part of. Through our generosity in this plate offering, we remember that we are indeed all one. You are invited to give online by scanning the QR code in your pews or to drop an offering in the offering basket. For folks online, please click the link in the chat to give to First Universalist Church. Thank you for your generosity.
I invite you now into this reverent time of sharing the joys and the sorrows of our gathered community. If you would like to, you can place a hand over your heart to be able to listen from a heart-centered place. As Elizabeth places stones into the bowl, I will read aloud the joys and the sorrows of our gathered community. All are invited to share your joys and sorrows in the chat as well for our folks online that we may hear from our community gathered here. Oh, dear ones, this morning, do we have a few joys. We have a joy uh, from Kitty Forbush that it is raining. And we have a joy and a word of gratitude on behalf of First Universalist. Heartfelt thanks to Ed Deller, to Moritz Wagner, to Tom Reganis, to Michael Scott, and to Charlie Quartzel, whose efforts were instrumental this past week in the permanent installation of video screens in the sanctuary. Woo! There are things to celebrate here. We are moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. And along with um, joy also comes sorrow. We share sort of a joy and a sorrow from a great fish this morning that the cottage is sold and the separation is signed, holding you, Grant, in our hearts. From Patty Goodwin, we share the new news this week that George Okren's memorial service will be held on August 29th at 1 p.m. at Temple Sinai. All are welcome to attend. We share a sorrow this morning uh, from Bill and Becky Elwell that their daughter-in-law is suffering from depression, holding her in our hearts, of course, and in healing love. A sorrow this morning from Cheryl Dunbar, whose father died yesterday morning after being in hospice for a few days in Chicago. And we also share a sorrow this morning from Rachel Baldanza. My mother, Susan Buffington, died August 13 in Utica. She lived 77 years. Many spent as a clinical social worker specializing in addiction counseling. She loved reading, writing short poetry, and her two grandchildren. She is survived by her husband of 53 years, Malcolm Buffington, as well as myself, John and Ben, and my brother Andrew and his family. We are holding you all, Rachel, in the heart of love this morning. Let us drop one stone into the bowl for the joys shared in our online community. And let us drop one stone for the sorrows shared in our online community. And Elizabeth will drop one final stone into the bowl to represent all of the joys and the sorrows left unspoken in the silent sanctuaries of our hearts. May all may all, may all be held in the heart of love. Dear ones, this morning I am reminded that our hearts are heavy, that we are living through many different beginnings and endings. So will you enter into a time of meditation and prayer with me? Will you take a deep breath with me? Sit back in your seat. Allow your weight to be held by the pew, by the chair, by the couch, wherever you find yourself. Allow your weight to be held by the earth. Allow our heavy hearts to be held this morning. Let us enter into meditation and prayer together. We are ever and always beginning. Holy fools in this endeavor we call life. Something changes. Someone dies. 
A project is complete. A new learning is required. And we are back to the beginning again. Holy in that we know that each life is sacred, especially our own. Fools in that we cannot claim certainty and that the wisest amongst us are clear about just how little they know. Each morning, a new day begins, waking up. A new opportunity to restart with the sun's waking. Spirit, source, God, teach us to enter each day with an open heart. Show us ways to be vulnerable with one another, to tell truth about our pains as well as our celebrations. Make space for us to give in, to move forward unfettered, to make that first move towards something unknown, uncharted. Help us to live life with an unguarded heart. Encourage us to release old patterns and old certainties based on times past. And grant us, grant us the blessing of being holy fools together. Grant us the blessing of beginning again. Grant us an openness at the start of this day. May we mark a new beginning together. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. As we sit with the new beginning of this day, as we contemplate what it looks like to move forward unfettered, to live life with an unguarded heart, let us share in some silence together. Let us join in singing our hymn of contemplation from our seats this morning, hymn number 86, Blessed Spirit of My Life.
This morning's sermon will be exploring a music album from acclaimed rapper, music producer, and hip-hop artist, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar has won multiple Grammy awards for his work, as well as the Pulitzer Prize in Music in 2018, becoming the first non-jazz or classical artist to win the award. The piece we are going to hear this morning is called United in Grief, from his most recent 2022 album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. We have included in your order of service the words, if your ears are not often attuned to listening to hip hop music or rap music, as the lyrics will certainly come at a different and quicker pace. So we invite you, uh, as we test out our screens this morning, to sit back and to listen to the song, United in Grief. something 1855 days I've been going through something be afraid what is a bitch in a miniskirt a man in his feelings with bitter nerve what is a woman that really hurt a demon you're better off killing her Repetitive narrative, so how you did it first. That is a predator in reverse. All of your presidents see with thirst. What is a neighborhood reputable? That is a snitch on a pedestal. What is a house with a better view? A family broken in variables. What is a rapper with jewelry? A way that I show my maturity. Black G wagging away from 
Front of the jury, Jay was magic, never had it in public. Late reaction, 50k to cousins, pros to caption. Pray none of my enemies hold me captive. So what? Never lost, no one could control us. I bought a rope and swatch, I wanted to once. I bought a 50 troops, I never swam in. I watched Keith, I broke cars in four months. You know the family dynamics on PP. They execute me, slap me on the PC. I bought a 2 2 3 a bike for the street. You want food through me, I smell TNT. They ain't got no push, so I got me a push. They ain't got no report, they ain't wanted to push. That's why we use the case. But the money wiping the tears away. What place does hip hop have in these hallowed halls of worship? In a sacred space where music doesn't often carry the same beat, is this music sacred? Can it teach us about how to live life? How to remain present to life? How many folks here are familiar with Kendrick Lamar? All right, we got a few. I know, I know that this music can help us to remain present to life. I know that the music of Kendrick Lamar has been opening doorways towards vulnerability, honest conversations about misogyny and transphobia, Exploring generational trauma and true self-disclosure. These are deeply spiritual issues. And they do belong in church. If we believe in the inherent worth and dignity of each person, we are committed to fighting forces that seek to diminish that worth. Like transphobia. Like generational trauma. Like toxic masculinity. If we seek to uphold a search for truth and meaning, this must be a place where people can tell their truth. Not just about what we would like people to see, the positive and the good things we have going on, but also about those pieces of us we would rather hide away. Our sources of Unitarian Universalism take the teachings of prophetic people as a main theological source specifically one of the most humanist sources for what we believe. And in this way, Kendrick Lamar's Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers has so much to teach this community. As our song began, I wonder if you could hear a woman's voice imploring him to tell the truth. Tell your truth. It is the narration of his wife, Whitney Alford, whose voice features centrally on an album where her husband is telling the stories of his trauma. An album where he talks about loved ones going to jail, people he cares about dying, getting to therapy and owning where he has treated women poorly without regard for their feelings. She implores him to tell the truth about the inherited messages of men being weak when they rest or even express emotions, to tell the truth about his transgender aunt and uncle and the ways he was raised to use derogatory language towards queer queer folks as common language. Tell them. Tell them your truth. Tell them. This album comes out in a sea of music 
about keeping up appearances, in a genre that has long been about and needed to be about power, sometimes about sexual prowess, sometimes even about killing people. Hip-hop has always been a vehicle to tell the truth about people's lives. And sometimes that truth has been harsh, almost uncomfortable to hear. And yet hip-hop has provided a mirror and a place for expression and self-exploration for the people making the music and for the listeners. It is powerful. It has so often been a target for censorship and criticism from people who have sought to see only a certain truth, from people who have considered hip-hop vulgar or even an ugly art form. I have been a lover of hip-hop and rap music from an early age, as music that both had an incredible beat and which gave me a glimpse into a world I do not inhabit. I have been a student and a learner about the power of hip-hop music, and I'm so grateful this album has appeared to continue to learn from. I am interested to see how much more is going to appear in the wake of this pandemic. How many more people will be diving into these deep waters of vulnerability, of taking away the masks, of expressing ourselves unfettered? I wonder what pieces of music, maybe even whole albums, have been influential for you in your life. Music has such a power to reach into our hearts in a different way than the spoken and the written word. Music has the capacity to bring tears to our eyes, to evoke a memory, to bring us back in time to inspire us. I imagine there are albums or songs that accompany particular points in your life. A vehicle for expression or understanding that was right, where, right there when you needed it. On a collection, or on the radio, or streaming. I want to just give you a moment to think through one song or recording, one piece of music that has helped you in a time when you needed it. It could have been an album that gave expression to something you needed to say or even did not yet know you needed to hear. It could have been a song you learned from or that you recognized as your own story being told. Take a moment and just bring that peace to mind. Let it play through your mind for a second. And I'm going to ask you to turn to your neighbor and to share briefly about what that piece of music was and what it brought into your life. For our folks online, you will be paired up into breakout rooms for three minutes, and then we'll give you one minute to return. Let us take a few moments to share these influential pieces of music with one another. Please turn to your neighbor.
Make sure that your partner or neighbor has a chance to share. If you've already shared, think of another one. Let's close up our conversations. Come back. Come back, come back. Invite you all back. I know it's, it's hard. There's a lot to talk about. This is a community that loves music. If you can't tell, this is a community that loves music. I'm really enjoying having these moments this summer, especially to give you all some time to connect because I feel like you all listen to me so much. <laughs> and it's nice to just hear you connecting with each other. And I hope that you were able to have pieces of music that came easily to mind. It seems like you did. It seems like you were able to find ways to connect with one another around that, which is wonderful. I have to tell you that this album came for me at a really important time and juncture. I think we're seeing a new renaissance, a new unveiling in music around vulnerability, around healing, and a spiritually grounded new era in music, which is beautiful, beautiful to see. I feel remiss to not mention also Beyonce's Renaissance album as one of the ones this summer that is just incredible, but that's not what we're talking about today. I wanna to focus on three areas this morning for talking about this album and its impact. Perhaps three spiritual lessons to be learned from this important musical work, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. There is so much to unpack from this album that I could have written pages and pages and pages, but out of respect for your time and also the weather, I distilled it down to three uh, messages to share for you all. Spiritual gifts from this album that might help us in living our lives. The first, of course, the one that I started with, there is a power in telling the uncomfortable truths. Kendrick Lamar shares on his album the ways he, he uses women and sex to feel better about himself. He shares ways he has been homophobic. He shares about his feelings being hurt and about hurting others. He shares about no longer pretending, going beneath the surface of material things and appearances, and not liking what he finds. The power of this kind of truth-telling is that it invites us all to be honest about our experience, 
It invites more intimacy and vulnerability, and specifically intimacy with oneself. When we are able to look at our own experience in the mirror and stop pretending who we are and who we want to be, we can move towards a deeper sense of self-acceptance and growth. It is a struggle to tell these kinds of truths about ourselves. I don't know about you, but I like to look good to others. I like to be liked. I like to be well thought of. I don't want to admit where I have messed up or where I have been wrong, where I have caused harm. Revealing what has been hidden and telling the truth about these experiences is an important first step towards living an authentic life, towards living a life grounded in spirit, in trust, in intimacy. It is the act of a holy fool, which we'll be getting more into throughout this month, meaning someone who gives into a process and does not know where it is going to go. A beginning step towards reckoning, towards healing, tell them. Tell them your truth. The second gift that this album has to offer us is that not one of us needs to be responsible for saving this world or our communities or even the morale of others. Each one of us deserves to put ourselves first. In his song, Mirror, Kendrick Lamar continually repeats the line, I choose me, I'm sorry. In the midst of talking about the ways the world wants more from him, the way he continually wants more from the world, and how profits are made off of his emotional pain. So much of what he is writing about is about taking care of oneself, getting to therapy, sitting out the opportunities that you cannot truly show up for and not being anyone's savior. This feels like such a Unitarian Universalist and specifically Unitarian message to me. Do not look to idols nor prophets to be your savior. Do your work and look within. As a people who did not see Jesus as a divine son of God, but rather another teacher we could learn from, we have long been a people with a theology of not looking to other human beings, especially not single human beings, as saviors. Along the way, Kendrick Lamar encourages us to think for ourselves, to form our own opinions, to know our own beliefs about the world, and to do our best to live them out. Not one of us is here to save this world, and we especially cannot make change nor impact on our own outside of the sphere of the healing work we are here to do on ourselves. We deserve to put ourselves first through rest, through reflection, through caring for our mental health, through recognizing which relationships are important to us and investing in those. And the third message from this album, healing comes from asking for help and giving in to grief. We heard again and again in our song this morning, in his song, United in Grief, I Grieve Different. Also in his song, Father Time, Kendrick Lamar sings about the legacy of masculinity he received from his father. I got daddy issues, that's on me. Looking for I love you, rarely empathizing for my relief. A child that grew accustomed, jumping up when I scraped my knee, because if I cried about it, he'd surely tell me not to be weak. Daddy issues, hid my emotions, never expressed myself. Man should never show feelings. Being sensitive never helped. My mama died, his mama died. I asked him, why is he going back to work so soon? His first reply was, son, that's life, and Bill's got no silver spoon. Daddy issues, F everybody, go get your money, son. Protect yourself, trust nobody, only your mama and them. This made relationships seem cloudy, never attached to none, so if you took some likings around me, I might reject the love. It gets deep, y'all. And out of naming these messages that were passed down to him, he names that he is reaching out for help. He is going through something and working with a therapist. He knows he cannot see his way out of this alone. 
from isolation towards relationship, from personal experience to the communal, there is a power in saying, I cannot handle this on my own. There is a power in reaching out for help. I know, I know we have a bunch of folks grieving in this community right now, going through it after recent losses, some sudden, some following an illness of a loved one, There is such power in reaching out for help and coming here and choosing to be with others when you could be at home alone. There is a unique pain in revealing yourself in this way, in sharing publicly that you have someone close to you who has died. And if there is anything you can know about coming to church, this is a place to come to not feel alone, to know that our many griefs can be held here, griefs around one's childhood experiences, griefs about something we wish we could have said or done, anticipatory grief, and yes, of course, grief at the loss of loved ones, the death of loved ones. It is the primary task of this community to help us grieve and to remain present to the deaths of our beloveds alongside the many deaths we experience over the course of a lifetime in endings and in beginnings. Music that validates this process and honors our grief, our healing, our need for help, our reflection, our lives is deeply precious. May we be grateful for those moments when we needed a song and possibly didn't even know we needed it and one appeared. May we be grateful for those artists and musicians who have chosen to bear themselves and their experience for our communal learning and benefit. For the holy fools who gave into the process and held up the mirror to us, who allowed the creative process to lead them and to lead us towards further healing. Tell them, tell them your truth. May you know that this is a place that can hold your truth, no matter how ugly it might feel or how much you would rather hold it tight to your chest. May you go forward this week and in the days ahead, encouraged by knowing you are not alone. You alone are not expected to save the world. And may you know the healing power of receiving help, of naming grief, of breaking cycles, of beginning a new journey, because you are loved and you deserve it. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so. Dear ones, this morning, I think we need to sing out. I think it's time for us to join our voices in song. And so we will sing hymn number 118, this little light of mine in the interest of telling our truth, of letting our lights shine. So let us join. Please rise in body or in spirit and sing out this morning. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine Everywhere I go Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine I'm gonna let it shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Building up a world, building up a world. I'm gonna let it shine, building up a world. I'm gonna let it shine, building up a world. 
remain standing as we extinguish our chalice flame. Let us read the words uh, together printed on the screen. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of love and justice, taking it outside these walls to the world we live in until we are together again. As we close our service this morning, I'll invite you to place a hand over your heart. If you're joining us online, I invite you to turn your settings to gallery view. If you're here, take a look around you. Take a look around at who is here with you. Who is here in this space? Who is here with us online? Let us remember we are connected here. As we go forth this morning, May we remember that we are here to tell our truth. May we be reminded that not one of us is relied upon to save the world, that we are here together, that there is power in being together. May we honor our many beginnings and endings. May we honor the griefs present here. May we remember that all of us grieve different. Dear ones, may you know that you are loved. And may you go and be that love wherever you may go. Amen. Blessed be. And may it be so. Thank you. 